Thank you, AJ. I think all what you've talked about this morning, I've been going through in the last few days, like really in my face. And I know at some stage I did long to see more. Question being, if, and sometimes I, I listen in my heart and I go, oh, that might have a bit of truth in it, but you, you sometimes get around my father, I'll be specific, very negative, very opinionated. I do find I have the emotion of anger and I go, okay, and he's very, very judgmental, always has been. And what I find is that when you're trying to look at your addictions, when do you actually learn the difference between the people that are really, truly telling you with loving their heart and the people that are just plain dealing with their own judgments and beliefs? Um, well, firstly, everyone is just really dealing with their own judgments and beliefs. Um, but let's look at what you just said as, we, as you said what you said. You said you're talking about your father and he is. Can you just keep... Can we go back to that? Oh, he's very judgmental and opinionated. <laughs> and he's very um, negative in a lot of ways. Like this. Can you see why you say he is? You're not actually looking at what I am. Can you see that for a start? Mm -hmm. Okay. So all of those things. Now, how many of you would feel upset about a person like that? It, frankly, no. Most of us, right? Okay. So, so my response, so this is my response. What's my response? What would you feel if you had, had a father like that? What's the first thing most of us would probably feel? Anger, yeah. Most of us would feel angry. Right. How dare he be judgmental towards me? How dare, you know, he's always opinionated. He doesn't ever listen to my opinion, you know? Like, and negative, like, you know, I try to do something positive in my life and what does he say about it? He just craps on it, you know? So, yeah, I'm upset about that. Now, remember what we said earlier. Every time we feel anger, we are in, or we are living in an addiction. And our addiction is not getting met. So my angry, judgmental, opinionated, negative father for some reason, isn't meeting my addictions. Right. What would be the addiction I would have, do you feel? What, what might be the addiction that I have? What do I want to feel from him instead of those feelings is what I need to look at. Uh, so let's look at the opposite. We want to we feel from him instead of angry, what do we want to feel? Peace, peaceful with him, right, let's say. Peace. Instead of judgmental, what do we want to feel? Acceptance. Ex acceptance. Even if we're wrong, we'd like to have acceptance. Uh, okay. Opinionated. Instead of feeling an opinionated man, what would we rather feel? So he listens to me, right? So he listens or listens to my opinions. My opinions. Instead of negative, what would we like him to be? Positive. Okay. There's my addictions. <laughs> you laugh. You say, you say, hang on a sec, hang on a sec. AJ, are you saying that me wanting peace in my life is an addiction? And I'm saying, yeah, that's actually true. And you're saying, hang on a sec, you're saying that me wanting acceptance is an addiction. And I'm saying, yeah, actually, that's true too. And what about someone listening to me? Everybody wants someone listening to you. Yeah, everyone's in an addiction with it. And... Everyone wants you to be positive all the time. Right? Yeah, that's an addiction too. So all of these addictions cover over something. Because, because I know that I'm wrong because my initial response was anger. And if my initial response is anger, is anger loving? No. So what would happen if I was in a loving space and this angry, judgmental, opinionated, negative man comes up to me? If I was in a loving space with him, what would happen? Oh, I'd give him a hug and say, I love your angry, judgmental, opinionated <laughs> self, right? But, you know, I don't know if I want to spend much time with you, but that's the way it goes. But you wouldn't feel this terrible feelings about it, would you, inside of yourself, do you think? 
You'd feel, if you're at one with God, do you feel, would you feel like, going, oh, you're a terrible man, you're stupid? You know, would you start projecting back at him? You wouldn't, would you? So the fact that I am means he is doing these things and in my law of attraction, and of course he's, if he's my father, he's created a lot of my law of attraction anyway, he's in this to expose my addictions regarding these areas. So what about my addiction to peace? When, when things are peaceful, what do I feel? Safe, secure. So can you see I'm starting to identify that I've got, must have some fears about an angry person making me feel unsafe. Why would an angry person make me feel unsafe? If I was at one with God, would I ever feel unsafe? Of course I wouldn't. Because when you're at one with God, it's like God's on your side. Who, do you, who else do you need on your side, really? If the creator of the universe is on your side, like, does it matter if nobody else is? Of course not. Right? So the fact that it does means that I have some fear to process about a lack of peace. So that's probably related to something in my childhood about dad being angry and I was afraid and you know, he brought home with him angry spirits perhaps and uh, it was well and not only was he angry but there's all these spirits that are angry as well all projecting at me and I'm feeling frightened little child and I want him now to stop doing that. I want him to stop being angry and start being peaceful so I don't have to feel this angry, this, sorry, afraid little child that's in me. And that's what I, so I project at him. Don't, don't you be angry with me. Don't you be angry with me. You get angry with me, I'm going to get angry with you for, for, not being safe, for me not feeling safe anymore. Can you see that? So it's like, so really what's happening is every time you list something about the other person, you're really wise if you can also make a list about what the addictions are. That why have you noticed all of these things in this other person? It's not so much you noticing them, it's that you're angry about them, which tells you that you must have an addiction. Like it's one thing to notice them. Yes, I agree. I, when, I, when I feel through you to your dad, yes, I agree he is all those things. Mind you, he isn't all those things. He has those injuries, is more like what I would put it. He has all those injuries, I agree. Right. Yeah, and that's the thing, AJ, I think, because there's times where he can carry on and I can just sit there really peaceful. And I hadn't necessarily looked at... There's times it's, it's a very uh, physical thing in me because it's the physical starting and then I tune in and go, what's the matter? And I'm, I'm, I can feel so much anger. And I think when it's like the Deserata, people that are vexation to the spirit, they say move. And I've had times where people have been really violently in a rage and... I have just been so calm and something comes mm. over me. But, but can I suggest to you that you often in, in violently angry situations go out of body. In other words, you detune from the situation, right? Many of us do this automatically. So, so my suggestion is in a next violently angry situation that you have, which I'm sure you must be still attracting, um, allow yourself to stay in your body and see how you feel bodily. Well, that I did once and... It was all completely like a little electrodes going off in my body all the time. And exactly. I kept thinking, what do I do? What you do is breathe and feel it. Breathe and feel it. Breathe and feel it. Diaphragmatically breathe and just keep feeling it. Okay. Right? And the, the second question following on to that is when you are sensitive or mediumistic and I go in mostly with the men and you go in and you're friendly and you're happy and like you're saying, you can feel that after a while, you can feel that sexual fondling going on and it's like, hang on, this is really not where I'm coming from and yeah. I just don't know what to do with that. I usually withdraw or disappear or, and I haven't physically dealt with it because yep. I can feel it and that's not what I want. So what we need to do is find out what's underneath that. So we'll go through this process because we haven't got as much time now because we've started a bit late, we'll go through the process of all the different things that we can do to get to the point of where we're actually feeling our causal emotion. Does that make sense? Thank you very much. But can everybody see how when you make a list of other people's stuff, you are also making at the same time a list of your own addictions really? Does that make sense to you? Yeah. So, oh, the woman doesn't listen to me. So what's my addiction? I want the woman to listen to me. What's underneath that? I probably wasn't listened to as a child from my mother. 
Do you see how there's a whole link of things there? You know, the, uh, the woman doesn't find me sexually attractive. I'm not sexually attractive. Why, why is that? There's got to be something about my dad or my mum in amongst all of that. Like my mum might have suppressed sexuality, which meant that I had to suppress mine. Or my dad might have been overtly sexual and I was ashamed of him. And so I've tuned out of my own sexuality as a result. But with every single list we make about the other person that annoys us and makes us upset and angry, it is covering the actual list inside of ourselves of our addiction. So, what's the next thing we need to do? So the first thing you notice is an attitude, isn't it? It's a desire that needs to grow. The desire of wanting to know about it. And, and the desire of no matter how shameful it makes me feel, no matter how disgusting it makes me feel, no matter how afraid of it I am, I want to know. We need to develop this desire within us to know. 